Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Let's come back then to the story about the notes that Michelle Neal's department um, won't leave. We asked the DUP's Brian Kingston to comment about this. DUP didn't get back to us. Timothy Gaston from the TV did. He was the man speaking in the committee meeting and, and he's, uh, he's been telling us about how he feels about not being able to get these notes about what happened between Michelle O'Neill, the handwritten notes, which would summarise what happened between Michelle O'Neill and Paula Bradshaw. Well, Stephen, on the back of the newsletter trying to obtain this information through FOI that has been denied by the private office, I thought it was the right forum yesterday to try and get the committee to put on some pressure that these handwritten notes would be released for people to see. Let's be very clear, on the back of the COVID inquiry, there's an expectation on civil servants taking the notes that they would be released at a future date. So any obstacles and the challenges I faced yesterday were certainly futile and there's an expectation that any note that is taken at any of these meetings should be should be made public. Let's not forget this was the chairperson of a committee who was who had went to have a private meeting with a witness. Um, so if there's nothing to hide, there's no reason that these handwritten notes shouldn't be released for all to see. We have seen in previous times where there has been handwritten notes which give a fuller minute of the meeting um, rather than the typed up version that are, that are released further down the line. So I'm very interested to see why these handwritten notes have been withheld and I'll be doing all I can to ensure they're put into the public domain. Paula Bradshaw, the chair, uh, 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 as you know, she's accusing you of consistently, constantly trying to disrupt her committee. Well, that's very good for, for Paula to claim. Paula doesn't like hard questions. We've seen that um, in the last number of committees. We've well, seen she's that getting plenty of them, isn't she? And she's dealing with them, to be fair to her. What's that dealing with what, Stephen? She's dealing with you and your questions and questions from many people around that committee. And she's not a witness. She's the chair. She's not a witness, but the way she has handled and chaired the meeting, especially the one of the First Minister, has called into question um, how she handles some of the more tough exchanges, more robust exchanges. Look, we are there as a scrutiny committee. It's important that elected members, regardless of party, regardless of party size, are given the opportunity to scrutinise and ask robust questions of those coming to committee to give evidence. Uh, Is your party going to submit an appeal? Um, Or or, or is that for Thompson at the newsletter to do? Who's going to question this with the Information Commissioner? Or what are you going to do next? Well, my hope that David um, from the newsletter, who has been very good in covering this story, who's been very proactive in covering this story, will submit um, the appeal himself. If he doesn't do that, well, then we'll have to explore other means and I'll have to do that as an MLA. I don't want to have to do that as an MLA, but if I have to, I certainly will. You were told in that committee it's not their job to to, to, to help journalists, is it? Stephen. Stephen, let, let's put this... Or to do the on. job of journalism. This, this was a private meeting held between the chairperson and the witness, directly relating to, relating to an evidence session... Wasn't that was private. ...taking place that was later on at committee. So this, this relates to our committee, this relates to the integrity of our committee, this relates to how um, the committee session with the First Minister was handled. So this directly relates to our committee and anybody else that seems to claim... Otherwise, um, as we heard yesterday, my proposal was bunkers, but I think those who are claiming otherwise are the ones that have questions to answer. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.